Each episode of the Lion Goat podcast is completely improvised. Expect comedy. Do not expect consistency or sense to be made. This is random nonsense for your amusement. I am Podbot. I make the Bebop go beep boop. On today's episode, we class things up again, Pacificatius takes a break, a dull host sits in, and we get a glimpse of the starry night from the window of a space taxi. If you want to experience this podcast as intended, listen, while wearing stereo headphones. Warning, the following podcast contains explicit material intended for emotionally immature adults. Trigger warnings for this episode include discussion about adult themes, violence, profanity, murder, sexually explicit behavior, political incorrectness, animal, emotional, mental, physical, sexual, and substance abuse. Listen to this. It might rot your brain. I warned you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to welcome you to another episode of Droll Interviews with Perspicacious Thompson. As I'm sure you're all aware, I myself, your host, Perspicacious Thompson, I'm on vacation this week getting some much needed R&R and escape from this recent scurry of interviews that I've been subject to. Just a little relaxation. But we have a very special guest interviewer and a very special guest that comes from the neither regions of the galaxy. I hope you all enjoy. I'll be back soon. Thank you for listening. I am boring. Tell us from boredom. Boring, boring, boring. Quite possibly the most boring man in the world. Boring, 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 boring still. And I am this evening's host on Droll Interview. And I am boring, 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 boring as fruit. Currently interviewing a man living a great life, a great career. He is a, a space cabbie. His name is Henderson Marksonville. Marks in Hendersonville? Ted Kendersonville. Ted Bundy, you're joking, uh huh. <laughs> it's actually Ted Kendersonville. This is a super exciting life you live in, I am impressed. Where did you go to school to become a base cabbie? Really, it's all about having independence. That when I went well into this field, I just wanted to have my own independence from the rest of the corporations out there. And it's more about a legacy. My father was a cabbie, and my grandfather was a cabbie as well. So, have you ever been, um, carjacked? I have never been carjacked. No, uh, it's the rocket ship, very similar to the rocket ships that you've seen in other locations, of course. And it would be quite difficult for someone to catch up to me. I mean, (laughs) what are they gonna do, knock on the door with a pistol? I mean, I could just blast them with my lasers. (laughs) How fast can you go in your space cabin? What is the speed limit on the... Intergalactic highways. There, of course, is no speed limit in space. My cabbie can do the fastest of all the cabbies out there. We can go warp three on a good day. Uh, But I like to keep it under warp two, of course, because it makes the clients a bit uncomfortable when they feel the weight of their body at 12 G's. <laughs> oh, hmm. Does your vehicle have shields? Of course it does. What do you think? I am operating some sort of tin can operation here. Of course I have the finest shields available. It's in a way to keep us safe from the space bandits. Does your vehicle have lasers, perhaps? I mean, I really is a cab, but you gotta defend yourself from space pirates, don't you? Obviously, that's what I just said. <laughs> Lasers. No, we all know those are illegal. I mean, I might have something on the black market, but uh, let's, let's move on. I can't talk about that right now. Are you trying to get my license revoked? Uh, I mean, there's dangers out there. Of course, we've got to prepare ourselves for dangers and treat it seriously. That seems, that seems like a lot of effort to... Uh... Is the pay good? No. It pays like shit, of course. I get about 10 credits a week. At least I can buy some food with it. Do you get a percentage of the fare? 
Is, is that what it is? No, but as I've mentioned, they run my own business. That's the whole point. I mean, it's freedom. It's freedom from the empire, freedom from the other corporation. And I'm not at anyone beck and call. I get to make my own schedule, and I can choose my fares as I prefer. That's why there's a consequence of not making as much money as by the past. What kind of special license do you have to have for that space cab of yours? Yeah, I mean, it's not really that. It's just a license to operate a business, just like any other license. <sighs> All the time, I'm coming and I'm going. I'm coming and going and coming and going and coming and going. That's much of what space cabbing oh, is. Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir, but I've been trying them. The boys from Barry Jam. Excuse me, sir. Oh. This is the line producer, girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. We really need you to bring some comedy. Mm -hmm. If you could just really, really try. Oh, it's a delicious old. Oh, we'll get him on my job, guy. You know, we're going for a certain sort of professional output here. Sounds like you've got your hands on some of those space kicks from the restaurant at the end of the show numbers. Money shot of the life. Now there's no need for that. <laughs> the bond was Great. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll get back to the recording. Are there any that I could... Try it? No, please continue with the story I bought. Try, try, do, but do try the boys and Barry. Oh, excellent. I love the boys and Barry. Mm. There really wasn't much to the story. I'm just a cabbie. Mm. I mean, I can tell you funny things that have happened in a cab. Is that right? Yeah. There was some time, some time. prostitutes, and we went to Orion 9. And That's a long way to go. There was the Zebulon 6 affair. Very far out there. Is that anywhere near Beogars? Beogars. I appreciate the pronunciation. Be it all Jaws. Beogars. Not that Beogars. Not the movie Ghost Beogars. No, the planet Beogars. That is where my family originates. Don't make jokes about Michael Keaton. Everyone makes jokes about that Michael Keaton movie. I mean, I, I don't know if I I don't know. Space things. I'm not a spaceologist. So. Spaceologist? That's ridiculous. You mean an astrophysicist? I am a boring, 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 boring man. Boring, 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 boring. Boring as dry white toast. Boring, 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 boring still. With a slime jam. Boring, boring, boring. Boring as for jam of occasion. You're boring to me, sir. Well, I would tell you that this sort of insult a bit ago. What gets you to kill? <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. You have insulted thousands of your good wife probably. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about dropping your muscle. I'm saying you should do try it, please. It's fantastic. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Oh, orgasm on your tongue, right? Mm -hmm. right? You mentioned that before. I mean, they're delicious. You ever had an orgasm on your tongue? Are you refusing to apologize? Oh. I am whooping out my phasers. I don't think we should talk about that on the air, no. I am not going to apologize to me, I repeat myself. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Keep swapping up. I'm not going to have to point my uh, photon retreat on such a radio studio. So, um, tell us about the company that you uh, are driving for, sir. Henderson Peetsville. Pete's Henderson. Ted Kendersonville. No, no, that's your name. Yes. Your name? Uh, or the name of the company. Yes, of course, that's my name. Are, are you self employed As I mentioned before, I am self-employed. Uh -huh. This is my company. You have dental? Yes. Oh, that's good. Vision? Yes. That's really what we're looking for these days. Employment is a healthcare package because, God damn, you know, very expensive. I drive on my own volition, at my own schedule, at my own time, whenever I like. You're absolutely right. The Empire had ruined everything! Universal Corporation yes. pays nothing for slave labor! That is a matter of fact, that is absolutely here. Uh, oh, excuse me, entirely too much boys and very jam hot. Jesus Christ! Oh, maybe a little too much cherry, because that one. Oh, that is really uh, delicious as you. I take this as a good compliment on my product, such effluviations of the spirit. What a great compliment! You must have done some research. In the name of Tsar, my great grandfather, all is forgiven. I will not have to shoot your study with my torrid peoples. 
You're not never saw me for that. Have you been to that new nightclub on Titan? The uh, Titan, the moon of Jupiter. Yes, the moon of Jupiter. Yes, it is a very uh, good time. I, I hear. Well, there's there's a great booming stereo there. They were playing that latest song by oh, what's her name? Uh, uh what's her name? Uh, Billy, 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 Billy. I love, I love, I love, I love Billy. I love Billy, Billy. I love Billy, Billy. I love Billy, Billy. She had three of them, huge, like watermelon. Uh, you must be talking about her breasts, of course. Yes. And a phaser. Yeah, a phaser. Oh, I had no idea that uh, the space highways were so dangerous. Of course they're dangerous. Maybe we should get our congressman involved. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Uh, yes, he indeed is a very good congressman. I've never heard such a ridiculous notion in my life. It's the Wild West out there. Congressmen have no say in the intergalactical space lanes, and I wouldn't want them to. It's part of freedom and liberty that brought me to this job, not having to look over my shoulders for the will of some damn politician any time that they decide they want to put their fingers into this minor own business. That's what I say. Jonesy Jones, lifetime member of the Delaware Project. He's a great senator. Every time I see him, he shakes my hand. And uh, he said he enjoyed the ride you took him on in your space cab. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, Jonesy Jones. Mm. Well, you didn't mention it was Jonesy Jones. He's not like the other politicians, of course. Oh, yes, I can regale you of that great adventure. Well, it seems that Jonesy Jones, he had gone down to the local gaming hall, and he had found himself... Oh, what are those watermelon women that you're talking about earlier? Well, Jonesy Jones, he didn't want it to be known that he was a watermelon man, even though he was a watermelon man, and I can tell you some stories about him being a watermelon man. I mean, he liked those watermelon seeds. He liked to put them in his mouth and spit them around, and spit them out, and uh, suck on the seeds. Suck on the seed, suck on the seed, suck on that thing. Yeah, well, that was the way he enjoyed his watermelon women. But anyways, Jonesy Jones, well, he tells me, yes, hey, yeah, he tells me I need to take him down to the uh, old uh, council house. And so we went down to the council house, and, well, it was just a regular affair, but I did have to go through three time warps, and there was the occasional space battle that we avoided. Oh, I can tell you about that space candidate from the Xenon Carter Tail, oh, KM97. Well, that Xenon thought to say 97. Oh, well, that's a place where they all the greatest bandits, the, the most hideous bandits of the galaxy, they hide out there. Well, anyways, we got them and picked them up there, and we went down to the council house, and well, he had to make his vote. He was due there at 1230, and we had 12 par 6 to go, and as you know, 12 par 6 takes quite a bit of time. And so, well, we had to dodge and dash through a few different asteroid fields, and when we we made it through the third asteroid field. There was an explosion. I mean, a supernova in the Parallax Galaxy. Well, that supernova from the Parallax Galaxy it caused a space-time continuum gravitational vortex. And that gravitational vortex, it made my ship go into a spiral and we nearly died. But I pulled it off. There was nothing to worry about. And he made it to his meeting on time. <laughs> What can I say? I'm a space caddy. It's what I do for a living. I apologize for the dead air. What dead air? Are you saying that my story was dead air? I thought it might be better to keep it running on mute then. I thought you engaged in my story. Was it not engaging for your earthling? <sighs> Sorry. I swear it's impossible to get good help least. Oh shit, my mic's on again. Are you prepared for this interview? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. In addition to the lovely dry white toast that we have on this, the, today's episode, finish your thought. I am truly you can do it. Curious about what you're going to tell us next, a Mr. Space Cabby Man. Hey, what the next question? Of course. What? What do you expect me to just run the interviews myself? Aren't you the radio host? Space Cowboy. Can I go with that? No. Ted. Maurice. Kendersonville. That's what the bumper sticker said. No. Mm -hmm. How many? People getting carried in your space cab. My space cab can carry up to 12 passengers. I have a special deluxe 
It is. Oh, so it's not like a two-seater. Very sizable. Yeah. So it's more like a ship and cattle. No. But not a cargo. No. <sighs> we'll take a brief break for some advertisements. Now we will take a break for some advertisements. Please support our sponsors. Just imagine, this could be your advertisement. Please reach us at liongoatpodcast at gmail.com to provide sponsorship. And now, back to the show. Welcome back to another evening of droll interviews with Persipacacious Thompson. Uh, excuse me, that's a... Uh, yeah, well, maybe I should not have had the huckleberry jam. I apologize. As I've mentioned before, you do me great honor by your effluviation. This is a great compliment from my planet. You do not have to apologize or something. Okay, with indigestion. Uh, could you, uh, um, Carol? Excuse me, uh... I guess I'd give you a Carol. Carol. Now that's Carol with a G. C- come on now, Sarah Susan. Carol with a G. Sharperton. Carol. Oh, Kiki? No, Kiki, that's my sister. Is there something that I can help you with? Uh, I understand what you're saying. And if you could bring up the energy. Cheryl, don't, don't be like this. But I wish that you would uh, consider that. Don't be like this, Catherine. You know, it's good for all the equipment here, and I'd rather consider that you don't do a bit. Boring, 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 yeah. Boring is boredom, and you've never bored it before in your life. Excuse me, sir, I hope you're not referring to my interview. I wouldn't call it the boringest episode of Droll. I mean, they're all rather boring. Have you listened to that guy? There's that case on top of that. I mean, his voice in itself is about as boring as an anglerfish from the Zula Kotai Nippon Zut Galaxy. Not boring at all. Just keep up the energy. Good to that. Is that really the best that you can come up with? As a pen name for your intergalactic radio announcer? Yeah, yeah, that's great, okay. <sighs> boring is, is boring. What can you do? If anything, if you're not boring, you know. My grandmother used to say that uh, if you're bored, then uh, you are in fact boring. What are your thoughts upon that? I think you should apply yourself. Space cavalry. Logging the frequent flyer miles is most certainly. No, not boring at all. I, Yes, it's exciting. There's nothing boring about it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Would you care for some um, scotch? Bourbon? Scotch and bourbon? I prefer a goggle blaster. Mm Hmm? Oh, yeah. And fat cigar, yes, of course. Whatever. But your space cabby. Well, you you can't be dry right to us. I will have a cigar and bourbon. Whiskey. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Gas interviewer, Mr. Joseph. Uh, if you could please uh, sit in the uh, nice comfy chair that doesn't make all that racket. If you could. Uh, yes, uh, a leather chair would be much better than this creaky old rickety bastard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do it great. Did you mention that you need some refreshment? Uh, yes. Yeah, I've got a nice glass for you here. Neat? Yeah, here you uh, go. Okay, enjoy. Uh, I will try it. Uh, is it cold? I prefer cold and neat. I don't like hot and dry whiskey. Well, of course I wouldn't give it to you hot. It's whiskey. No, no, the ice doesn't really water it down if you put more whiskey in it. No, it, it, it'll even it out. Excuse me, sir. It's pure whiskey. There's nothing in the whiskey. I mean, it's a cheap glass, you know. What is this? It's pure whiskey. I don't know what you're talking about. As I was saying before, Persipicus Thompson is a member of the League of Bored Gentlemen, mm. and... Uh, yes, are you a member of that particular uh, society of boring men? I myself am not yet a member, but no, I, I have considered it. But I don't think of myself as particularly boring, and I... 
think that that's a very insulting comment. That, that's very interesting. I would not think that they would allow an adventurous fellow who worked in the cabbie industry, like yourself, the space cabbie industry, I would not think that they'd allow you in. That's an adventurous life. Well, thank goodness. I wouldn't want to be a member, after all. I mean, like I said, I considered it once just because I wanted to hang out with my friend Pacificatius. A little bit more on the side, you know, but I wouldn't want to join. It, it, I picture it to be a bit like Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones? Yes, in the Temple of Doom, the, uh... The movie about the guy that has the whip and the heart? Automobile chase scene with the short round driving, yes. Are you saying that I'm somewhat like short round? I'm not applying your flying capabilities to short round uh, inability to drive. I mean, it was a great chase scene. I, I did enjoy it immensely. This is a job that requires a great amount of skill. Yes. I'm not applying your skills. I mean, obviously, I have to be licensed and uh, well-trained to operate an interstellar travel cab, right? I feel like we're going in circles. We talked about the licensure before. <sighs> I think the drugs are getting... Um, I don't think I need any more of that, um... I would agree. <laughs> Huckleberry wine. No! You often drink when you're on the radio? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that that was advisable. Yes, Stacy. I'm afraid that they, uh... I would be surprised if you could continue to get away with that activity. No. Sorry. Some influviations are allowed and some influviations are not permitted. Save for later. <laughs> Mr. Gus interviewer, yeah, we could maybe get back to the interview now. I mean, if you don't mind, we're getting a little far. That's how. Then if you could just get a little bit back. Yeah, that whole, I'll shit on the record and they'll buy it. Are you talking about Adam Sandler? Well, I realized there were lots of that. Are you talking to me, Sarah, again? No. Yeah, I'm not really sure which... It's the metaphor I get, you know. Yeah, uh, metaphors are strong on the radio, and that's good and everything. But... Look, I'd love to tell you some more stories about my space adventures and the joy of being a space cowboy. Would you be interested? Shut up. We're not discussing it. Uh... <sighs> Look, I think the efficacy of any type of humor should be permitted, of course, but you don't want to break the mold. We've got a certain pattern of professionalism here on the Drawl Interview Podcast, and we'd like for you to keep to the script if you could. Boring, boredom, boresome. It's not boring. Bo boredom, boredom, boredom. It's not boring. Boring, the boringest boring that you've ever boarded in your life. Why do you keep calling me boring? I, I mean, I could talk to Pacificatius and he may decide not to have you back next time. I'm not sure I want to be here. Look, I need you. Am I gonna have to come in there and wash him out back? Droll and dry as wheat toast. Dull and dry as rye toast. A marble dry, of course. Are you talking about rye? Rye is horrible. Beautiful. Mm, freshly baked. Do you have a bread? preference, uh, Mr. Cabby Man. Why, yes, I prefer an nice Italian bread. That is indeed a very good bread. Yeah, I covered in some garlic and some butter, and it's delightful. Mm, like a soup in the bread. You like a bowl? Oh, yeah, 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 or dip it in a nice broccoli and cheese soup. That's the way I prefer it. Well, that is very interesting. That is very adventurous. What, what kind of soup? Broccoli and cheese. I just had that with a nice mm. hard rind on the bread. Of course, you know, we like to dip our penises in this soup. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would fit in the bread bowl. Is it a big bread bowl? I mean, I can't fit the entire baguette in there, but I, I already can do quite a bit of bread in the bowl. How big? Perhaps your tiny earthling phallus would fit. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that is possible. Like that. I guess I would fit in there. If you... Does it leak? Does the bread bowl leak? It's not so much an issue of leaking as it is it's more like an issue of slashing out from the sides, from the girth. Hmm, I see. I see. But it's not sprayed with a special lacquer that keeps it in there. It just stays in there until you're done eating it. That's how long it's been. And you can eat the bread, too, right? Oh, yes. As you go? Of course. Yes. There's a special little rim I put around the... I have a brain idea, sir. Well, there's this inertia involved in the space travel, of course. So there has to be a protective mechanism. I like that idea. I mean, maybe they should make it in a restaurant based on bread bowl soups. 
But that would be probably the only bit of money maker, I, I do believe, don't you? Are you okay? Mm hmm. What kind of reference do you find in your travels across the intergalactic speedway? Freeway? Well, of course, that is Rothstrott at the end of the universe. Mr. Cappy Man, uh, please. That's uh, the one I prefer. Do you prefer, like, dine in, diners and drives kind of thing? No, it's always to go. Wait. No, I like to <laughs> use the space transporter to receive my food so that I can just get it on the go. What is that that you're eating? Yeah, I have no idea what that is. It's horrible. I think it's a seal. Is that a fish? Oh, I thought it was some sort of fowl. Oh, not a pigeon. It just looks foul, I suppose. I guess that's all. Yeah. I do believe that's exactly what it is. Well, how are you doing, my own? Is that one of uh, the aliens? Is, is that a fair? Did you bring someone with Well, you? of course you didn't expect me to stop working just so I could do this silly interview, did you? Excuse me, please, supplications. Hi, I mean guest, guest announcer. I'm so discombobulated today. I was wondering if you could maybe stop the dogs from barking? No. Whatever weird language it was speaking to us, I think it just wants to be heard. The aliens, is it from where? From Z96. Um, has it been vaccinated? No, oh, it's yours. Well, that's a bit personal, but of course all of my travelers are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. What kind of diseases are native to that particular area? I don't know why we're talking about diseases. I mean, they have the space box, of course. That is very interesting, sir. I suppose if you think so. Well, I do thank you, Mr. Face Cabby Man. Okay. For being on this particular episode of uh, tonight's guest. Excuse me, I'm Mr. Guest Interviewer. The name of the show is Draw. Draw Interviews. I do believe the name of the show is Droll Interviews, just in case you got a little confused, but I'm happy to be here, even though I don't find it quite insulting. Mm hmm What is your company's slogan? From one end of the universe to the other with Ted Kendersonville's Space Taxi. I have to create a jingle. Big happy man. Kind of like that rhythm, sparkly sounds in it. No, we would never have such a ridiculous jingle for our company. Excuse me, guest interviewer. Did you forget where you were? I believe you were trying to wrap up the episode. Uh, sorry. Thank you again for this affirmation. I find it quite complimentary in my culture. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that that is accurate. Uh, my thoughts are like sorting old photographs, one at a time, until uh, find one that catches your attention and draws you in. And uh, you watch it play out on the, the screen of your mind. And then the next thing you know, time has passed. You're very old and... Okay, well, just trying to keep me on track. This would be where you could insert an ending, maybe a nice... Summary, conclusion, something about what we've discussed up to this point and how you want the listeners to come back for the next show? And you're addicted to dry white toast and fat Cuban cigars and Irish whiskey and uh... Well, perhaps you could put down the beverage for now and just wrap up the episode. They make so good over there. And uh, Ireland, have you ever been to Ireland? 
Now of all the locations on the Earth, I think that that would be a very beautiful place to visit, however. Not on this planet. You came straight here as first time on Earth. No, I am contacting you over the Intergalactic Space Link, of course. Chris. I am not actually on the planet Earth, hmm. as I have a Kaksu bear with me. Interesting, I was not aware that uh, other humans lived in uh, elsewhere in the solar system. Now we will take a break for some advertisements. Please support our sponsors. Just imagine, this could be your advertisement. Please reach us at liongoatpodcast at gmail.com to provide sponsorship. And now, back to the show. Now of all the locations, I think that that would be a very beautiful place to visit, however. Interesting. Is the house in the No, the housing costs in the intergalactic space are astronomical. Oh, hmm. It's deplorable! Horrible! <sighs> what a pity, what a shame that is. I really, really cannot believe that that is a... I can't find a good enough adjective to continue with, with this descriptory discussion of uh, sentences. And I am flabbergasted, astounded. That is an amazing story. Please, tell it again. You want me to tell you how much rent there is in the intergalactic space? Is that what you're asking me? Or really? I mean, do you think that would interest your listeners? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it seems highly unlikely, but I suppose, maybe? Oh, you did write a book about it. No. And the name of that book is? I didn't write a book. How many pages is that? There are no pages. I didn't write a book. Action adventure? Rom-com? It's a rom-com? About rent. Okay. About a space cabbie who picks up a very sexy lady in trouble, fair in trouble, okay. I mean, stereotypical of a 1940s PI, private detective, but in a galactic setting. It seems like you're writing this on your own. Interesting. Uh, Are you coming up with this on the spot? I will, uh, um... I mean, I guess we could consider it. Uh, um... HBO is probably looking for writers since they're on strike. Barrel? Carol? Cheryl. For the tenth time, it's Carol! Carol with a G! Uh, Harold? Carol! What is your name, is dear? Uh, please, uh, could you order me a copy of this man's book? I mean, that's not exactly my job. I'm the line producer. Where do we go to purchase a copy of your book, sir? I didn't write a book. I suppose. Mm. Oh, well. There you go. Is that good enough for you? I mean, do you think that I am just here to serve your needs? Is that what you think? I produce this show. This show wouldn't exist if it wasn't for me. And my hard work. I'm ready always for this. <laughs> okay, I'll keep my God damn it, now what the hell? I hope I'm not losing content. So, I mean, it seems like he's losing his place. Has he? Had any recent psychological issues? <sighs> Have we not been screening these guest interviewers before they come in here? Oh, sorry, I got my mind's off track there. I, uh, no, I am. Um... Got the mic was on again. Have you had some recent psychological issues? I do not have a, a split personality. I am. Dolly McDolson from Dolesville, Dollard, down Pennsylvania. What is it like living in Pennsylvania? It seems like it might be dull there, but beautiful. Oh, of course Pennsylvania is dull. That's why the Dutch live there. Be careful! No, I mean, they live there because it's peaceful and harmonious with nature, yes. Harmony is important. I believe so. Well, of course. I just like riding in the horses and carriages. So I like to feed the horses with a little bit of intergalactic oats, if you get it. Uh, I like them. Are there any sort of events that the Amish or the Dutch like to perform on the backs of their horses and carriages? Is it like that Ben Hur movie? Mm, all I want to raise. Yeah, he's a spear. Javelin, jousting. Really? That's astounding. Yeah, most Dutchers, Pennsylvania Dutch, they do a lot of things. I hear they build good barns, good furniture. I like the chocolate. Delicious. 
That's what I hear. XL6. That was the last year's model. It's dangerously fast. That's the way I like it. How many seconds? 0.1. That's a lot of light year and not a lot of seconds. Exactly. That's got some horsepower under the hood, yeah? What can you tell us about the engine? Does it break down frequently with all that travel? Oh, it is uh, lasted for at least seven years. Portals. Black holes, white holes, portals, or? We avoid the white ones. You can never trust a honky colonizer! Yeah, how bad? Maybe, Mr. Engineer, you can help this guy get out of the studio. He seems to have lost his way. Folding space. Kind of like a piece of paper. That's a really basic analogy. Huh? It's an interdimensional time war. Uh, seems like there is possibly a possibility of explosion. Doing it that way, don't you think? You better believe it! Like a supernova! You got a scout! You got a ray! What are you talking about? It seems like you don't have much of an education when it comes to astrophysics. Well, no, you're right. I am not by any means any kind of engineerologist in space travel, uh, making. I, I have no idea how that works at all. No, no. I am just a dull and boring boar man, Borson, from Boarsville. I won't hold it against you, but is that really what they call it? Yes, that is. That is there. It's a great state. If you say so, I hear the Allegheny or noise. Excuse me, uh, I know this is the third or fourth time that I've mentioned it, but I feel like we're out of time, and we had a very specific schedule that we were trying to keep to, Mr. Guest Interviewer. So I'm gonna have to ask you, uh, if you could, please bring the show to a close. I know that you're having fun and you're just getting into it. Uh, we had a rocky side at the beginning, but I'm gonna need you to bring it to a close because we're running out of time. It's simply a matter of the amount of time that we have, and it's not that much. And this is, this is my job. I'm the main producer. I need you to listen to me. Uh, I don't really understand, uh... Okay. The nature of the beast, or, or how that mechanical works on that level, uh, subatomically, I'm, I'm not a subatomatologist. No, oh, no, we're back on this again. I'm not even sure there is a thing called subatomatometry. No, that's not it at all. We're gonna have to call the plot back. It is time to end the show. Mm -hmm. Well, just because I'm dull doesn't mean I'm informed. No, I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> I like to spend my dull time dulling the best dull way on my dollar, playing it uh, with the dolls. There's a lot of dullness. Is he saying that he still plays with dolls? <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. I, could... I like the high-pitched dullness, like a kin to a cymbal doll on a ch... Mm. It seems like he's fading into some sort of psychological delusion or something. I know, I'm a little fat, uh, boom. Mm, doll. 
Sounds like that would make some kind of really neat ringtone. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I, I actually did win that to contest for being dull. Okay. For being dull? Oh, I thought you said for ringtones. Very dull. Yes. I guess that if you want, maybe I could bribe you with another one of these muffins to wrap up the show. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, well, maybe one more. Maybe one, 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 another, another Huckleberry one. What? Oh, yes, it's very gassy, I apologize. As I've mentioned in my culture, your affiliations are a compliment. But it does seem like maybe you've had enough of the muffins. Huh. I have indeed. I like 47 pieces of toast. Mm, that's delicious. And to that, I, I, I do believe, sir, that it's time to bring this particular episode of Droll Interviews to an end. I would like to bring uh, a special attention to the wonderful people at the Lion Goat Network. I'm so very appreciated. I'd like to point a finger at those hairline production guys. I would like you to drive yourself over on the intergalactic webberies of the internet -eries to the Alchemy Inc. store. Like, subscribe, share, follow, support. Excuse me. Mr. Interviewer, yeah. we really prefer if you promote our items for purchase and not the alchemy items for purchase because that's really a different. They're part of Lion Gov Podcast, but it's really a sort of different thing if you understand. Mm hmm. Well, the same with self picturing. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I've been exploited all my life and pretty good at yes. Did he mean promotion? That's true. I know what I'm worth. I mean, you might think that I am, uh... Not much. Just a very boring individual on a very boring, uh, podcast. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up for but, me. But, uh, I, I have, a uh, financial value to the world. I mean, mm -hmm. The goal is not to make millions or billions of dollars. I mean, we just like to make one. Just, to uh, that be a side effect of doing the thing that I, uh... Okay, wrap it up. Enjoy the most and that is dulling. Now, can we get back to the end of the show? Mm. Dull, 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 boring, dull. What? Like, when is this going to end? That's kind of my plan, we're just... And droning on forever and ever. If we could just get to the end of the show, Amen. we're doing so good there for a minute. Uh, no, no, that, that, I think that was a Randy Travis. Well, well, okay. I'm more of a jazz man, yes. Yeah, okay, great. I do enjoy a good saxophone, that, that is true. Just say the line. Mm hmm yes. I think a saxophone is, uh, would be especially helpful in your movie adaptation. I believe that was your idea, but okay. Uh, the saxophone to me symbolizes a very sexy young damsel in distress, if you will. Yeah, I would agree. Saxophones are great for high emotional. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's wearing a stole shoulder, you know. A black or a red dress. Now are you talking? I saw a lady in red, you know, that they're usually in trouble with those red dressing ladies. Uh, with a stole and a little hat, you know, veil, and that's what that's What about red shoes? <laughs> Accessories are important. Oh, let me tell you about this one fair that I got down in Cobbler Takadai Suck. Well, there was this alien, and she had the finest red dress that you've ever seen. It was the color of the horsehead nebula, and not that artificially painted horsehead nebula that you might find there on the Earth with the colors that NASA has added. And yes, kids, if this is your work time hearing this, all of those different designs that you have seen, all of those hoodoos of the nebula, well, they've been artificially colored. But the true color of the nebula is astounding. It is nearly blinding, and it causes... I, I took one look at this latest dress, and I had to put on my solar flare goggles because it nearly blinded me. This is a good story. I think we catch on now. Again, are you back to writing your own script? Yeah, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I think I'm done with this one. I guess you're not gonna thank me for being on the show. Rude bastard.
Uh, thank you for joining us. Mr. Cab Driver Person Man. You're welcome. Thank you for finally acknowledging my donation of my time. I suppose I'll say have a galactic day. <laughs> Well, we've had some fun today on droll interviews with Pacificatius Thompson. I'd like to say thank you to our audience. Thank you for tuning in once again to Droll Interviews with your host, Pacificatius Thompson. Tune in next week when we'll bring you another enlightening interview about the most prescient topics of our time. And once again, have a delightful evening. We would love to receive your feedback, your improvisation suggestions, your questions for advice, and your musical compositions for response. Please email us or send us a voicemail. Our address is liongoatpodcast at gmail.com. Like, review, subscribe, and contact us on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and YouTube at Lion Goat Podcast. Please subscribe to this podcast on your podcast player. We are available on Spotify and SoundCloud slash Lion Goat Podcast. Please tell all your friends, enemies, and any strangers to listen to our podcast. This will help us bring joy to everyone. Text-to-speech services were provided by FreeTTS.com and ReadLoud.net. Additional sound effects were provided by Freesound.org. Various audio clip content, used for the purposes of satire, were located on YouTube.com. Thanks to all the musicians, composers, engineers, vocalists, and content creators. Other original music for today's show was composed, performed, and recorded by the excellent musicians at Hairline Productions. Today's show was edited, produced, and recorded by the world's greatest sound designers and engineers at Hairline Productions. Please like their content on SoundCloud.